So the first one, I'm going to call it M2.0, which is all about minimalism. So minimalism is something that you'll notice on a lot of large companies. We'll have a look at some examples in a minute, but it's really stripping things back to the essential ingredients. And I guess that's what good UX design is all about. It's getting rid of all the unnecessary fluff and making things as simple as possible. And that also makes it easy. So the first one is simplicity. We're actually designing for the core thing that we're actually looking for. It allows you to focus on what you're designing for. It's then functional by keeping things simple, especially in UX, when it comes to designing complex websites. Um, ease of use is what we're aiming for. And then finally, clarity, you know, by focusing on very simple things, by stripping a lot of the unnecessary fluff away, we're being confident, but we're also giving clarity to the information that we actually want to produce and talk about. So let's have a look at some examples now. Here you, see, you can see Apple, they are the, the leader in, in, in this lovely simplistic design. This is from their website. So you'll see when they announced the MacBook Air 15 inch, uh, they do this for all the products, but there's a lovely uh, photograph of the bottom on a plain white background. There's some slight drop shadow, and then the rest is just big, bold text and really, really large buttons and call to actions. So here, you know, you, you know what you're looking at, you're focused on the product, and then there's really only one option to do, which is buy or then learn more. So let's have a look at what else they've got. So this is when you're going through their website, you can see, it's all a very simple color scheme. It's white, it's grays. And then sometimes when they have something um, special to announce, then you can see they've used the black here for the iPhone 14 Pro. They It stands out against everything else on the site. So you'll see the size of the text is very big. There's a, it's quite monotone. There's not many colors. And really the only colors that they use are in the images. So you can actually say the UI UX design for this is monochrome and then the imagery is where, where it all pops. And that's that's a great example of um, simplicity in action. And then I think this is the most simple page of all. So if, if you go to their page when they have a new model come out, so I went to the MacBook Air, and this is what the page literally lo lo looks like. It's not a load in there before you scroll down. So you can see that there's nothing there. It says MacBook Air, so that's what we're focused on. And then as you then scroll, then the website starts to come alive and it's quite exciting. So the next thing we're going to talk about is data. So this has been the year of data and um, big data and also using data as storytelling techniques. So how does this work? So let's have a look at some examples. So you'll notice there's a lot of fitness apps or all the trend. There's lots of apps that um, use big data and sometimes it can be quite overwhelming a lot of data, but definitely using charts and graphs and then using that number to tell a story. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're creatures of our stories and by having a compelling narrative and using the data, it then helps really influence people and I've put here inform as well. So we're using the data to back up our story rather than the other way around. So let's have a look at some examples. So here again, from the Apple website, I've pulled it up and you can see uh, they've used just a simple bar chart, but they've also got like a, a number at the time. So you can see this is 6.1 6 times faster. That's 3.6 times faster. So, uh, but the numbers don't really give it away. It's more the bar chart. You can see, you look at the bottom line, you look at the top line, and it, it's a dramatic visual difference. But they're using their graphs to tell the story of how fast their new rendering system is. Then there's things like Whoop. So Whoop is a wearable. It's kind of like it's like the Apple Watch without a screen, but it really focuses on fitness. And then they use data in loads of different ways. You can have your heart rate monitored. You can have your, your, your um, respiratory rate, your sleep. But they they use data to then tell stories about how your fitness is evolving. So you can see here. So they have a number for sleep. They have a number for activity strain. But like. So you've got the activity strain, a number is 9.1 optimal, but what does that mean? But by using the dial and showing that it's only halfway around, that's really kind of showing you how much more you have to push it. Um, I think that that tells that story quite nicely. So then again, we've got here on the app, they've got like recovery 76%, but by having it as a graph and uh, showing it in green and going three quarters away around the symbol, I, I think it's kind of just a nicer, it's like two ways of telling you um, how you're recovering with the number. The number doesn't say much by itself, but then when you see it as a chart, kind of like the battery on your phone, you know, you've got that nice little graph rather than a percentage. It just um, 
it just emphasizes the story a little bit more. So then we've got other things like Strava. So Strava is a website. It's also an app on your phone where you can track your runs. So I love running, but it gives me loads of different metrics that I can use. So here you can see this is a run I went for in the morning. Um, it tells me where I went. On a, on a map, that's really good. But then there's other things, like it breaks down my pace, and then it uses a mixture of numbers of different charts to tell me um, what different zones I was in. And by having different colors, um, the whole thing just helps you understand your performance a little bit better. And then, you know, here's another example of a chart that they've got on there where they show your run compared to another run, and they've got like two lines uh, and then like a bright dot. So you can see you're actually going faster or slower. And it's just it's just nice. It, it, I find the visual representation of it. I'm a visual learner, and this really helps me a lot more than just pure numbers. So now we're getting into some of the more exciting recent announcements. Um, which is So we'll start with VR, which is virtual reality. So we've got the Meta Quest Pro coming. So that's a Meta's or Facebook's $1,000 device. And that's... Um, I'm going to say that's it's a mixture of augmented reality and virtual reality. So virtual reality is kind of when you're whisked away into a full-blown simulation. Augmented reality is, is a mixture between the two. Um, but what Meta is, it's mostly virtual reality. So you can see you can do gaming on there, fitness, social, entertainment. All of this is going to need UI UX designs. Um, you know, the way you interact with things, the controllers, this, you know, this opens up a whole new world of designing for new devices that weren't here a couple of years ago. Um, so again, look, go in the cinema here. You, you need to think about how you're going to interact with your friends. How are you going to send messages on this device? That Meta spent over 30 billion invested into this. So uh, that's kind of where the future is for UI UX designers. I can see a lot of work in the, in the future. And then... That leads on to augmented reality, AR, which is a very similar experience apart from you mixing the real world with the digital world. And this is the way Apple has really gone. So they released the Apple Vision Pro, which is their three and a half thousand dollar headset. So it's on the top of the range, but they're very much focused on, they didn't even mention virtual reality once in the presentation. They're, they're, they're into augmented reality, especially professionals, you know, for that price point. So that's how, uh, you know, maybe we won't have desktop computers anymore. Maybe, so they've got, when you look at your laptop, the screen actually comes up above the laptop in the headset. Um, so when we design interfaces for them, how are we going to interact with them using our hands now? So you can scroll pages by, it's got cameras on it, by just a flick of your finger rather than um, a mouse scroll or I, I use a pen quite a bit. Um, so we need to think about all of that when we're designing. Um, and, and we can get, Apple's going to need a whole new eco structure, e ecosystem of um, products built for this platform soon. Um, and, and, they, and then Meta again, with their headset, they've kind of got a mixture. They they do skew a lot more to gaming, but again, they've got. You can see the interaction of the screens here with the headset on. You can have multiple screens. Um, is this going to take off? I don't know, but there's definitely been a lot of investment into it. So we need to move with the times for the new gestures, and we need to think as designers how we're going to design to these things. And then we move on to MLP. So that is minimal lovable product. So. If you've ever worked in a professional environment, you will have heard of MVP, which is minimal viable product. And that's basically um, getting something out of the door that we can then improve on over time. But now we're moving towards a minimal lovable product. And that's basically more quality over speed, really, and trying to get things um, a much higher quality before it's released. So that's really thinking about accessibility, making sure the product is open to everybody when it first launches, a key aspect in UX design. Then it's using common design systems. It's using reusable components that, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So it's really not going too flashy on the interactive elements of the website. It's using common design systems that everyone knows, everyone uses to get things uh, quicker in the design process. And then really emphasizing uh, the quality over speed. So we want to release a product that's not just minimal, but that people love using. So that requires a lot more time in development, a lot more time in user research. And I would say really a, a, lot, a lot more time rather than on the agile development process, on the user-centered design process. And that's spending more time with customers, more time with um, users, really designing something that they're going to love, more prototyping, more sketching, 
before it then goes into a development process because it's a lot cheaper to throw something away early than it is later on. So now into graphic design, we're going to have a look at some type. So what's new in the world of typography this year? So here we go. There's three things. One is big, one is bold, and one is all caps. So you can see from this presentation, I've tried to use some of that design style. I've pulled up the awards website of the day. That's A-W-W wawards.com uh, and you can see it's just it's a sans serif type so it's a modern typeface it's just big it's bold it's fresh it's um, very brave it's quite modern uh, and I personally really like it it's kind of my design style um here's some examples you can even see some of the websites of the day that have been nominated have all got big and bold modern typefaces. The studio one uses lower caps, but the other two are using all caps. Um, and it just seems that for titles, it's just, we're going we're going big this year. So that's something to bear in mind when you're designing. I hope you enjoyed that. Watch the next video if you want to learn more about UI UX design. See you later.